Welcome everyone and uh, I would love to continue on my live streams today so hopefully it's gonna look uh, and sound much better so we'll see uh, but uh, uh, today I'm trying a little different setup and I really would appreciate uh, if you would uh, let me know the sound quality if uh, there is uh, any noise on the background so on I would really 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 do appreciate okay but uh, anyway I'm gonna continue to work on uh, the same development what I worked previously uh, uh, I'm not gonna show you today probably uh, the big picture because for me it's impossible uh, I'm moving you know towards to the right and uh, now I'm gonna concentrate uh, just on one of the sections okay let me know if you can hear me okay let me know if uh, the sound is good uh, uh, now I have to probably tell you uh, and I told uh, in the different streams uh, that I am actually streaming on the different platforms I'm streaming um, on the YouTube uh, there's also you can watch me on Facebook uh, you can watch me on Instagram on the Twitter uh, on uh, OK Adnoklasniki Kontakte if you uh, on Russian sites uh, Twitch and 13 different platforms I believe uh, LinkedIn uh, so I'm also there and a few others okay and please uh, it, I would really appreciate if you can comment uh, and that way I'll know that you connected you there and uh, if you do have uh, any questions related to wood carving feel free to ask me I'm not gonna do long streams uh, I don't think I'm gonna do really long ones but you know uh, just uh, little chunks so you can feel um, uh, the way I carve my approach to wood carving uh, I mentioned that uh, almost all the time I'm not saying that my approach is the best approach there's a, a lot of different approaches to wood carving and the different schools of wood carving uh, even different uh, place you go to one town to another city and there, there is a craftsman people in that particular city teach a certain way to do the stuff and uh, sometimes you know people think that's the only way that's the only uh, right way to uh, to carve wood okay so no I'm not okay uh, uh, my approach is just my approach uh, I carve uh, pretty much uh, all my life and I developed some of the skills and the, the reason why I'm actually even showing that video to you I really want to share some of my skills uh, to the world uh, you can see and maybe you can catch some tricks some uh, ideas you never thought of uh, maybe you know you can just watch uh, just the, the process you really love a wood carving process uh, creation of uh, three-dimensional sculpture and so on uh, this project is not three-dimensional sculpture this project uh, it's big but uh, let me tell you as I told in the different streams it is uh, authentic okay it's authentic to Italy it's authentic to not just the Italy because Italy is a big uh, you know a big culture I should say uh, you go to Rome it's one culture you go to northern part of Italy it's absolutely different culture different towns Milan is different uh, Venus is different it's a different developments um, uh, you know of that okay and uh, thank you very much for those who already connected Paul Misrat Sergio Jeffrey Ariana good to see you great okay let's do that okay so today what I want to show to you my approach uh, to design okay it's not really the design techniques I should say uh, but I'm gonna show you uh, how I develop let's say I do have a chunk of wood right here and uh, I need to develop some movement which is gonna be connected to the overall movement of course all right so it is gonna be connected to the overall movement and I need to create beautiful acanthus. Paul, 
Willen Gibbons is my favorite carver also. Not only him, by the way, I've got uh, two carvers I really honor. I honor Grillen Gibbons and I also really, really, really honor, you know, 15th century German uh, uh, carver. His name was uh, Tilman Riemenschneider. Uh, it's actually an interesting story about that Tilman uh, Riemenschneider. Uh, not what he said. I, uh, I really appreciate what he was saying about uh, why he's doing his carving to the perfection. I really do appreciate his uh, thought behind the process, uh, the way he carved. Uh, if you compare, let's say, Grillen Gibbons and uh, Tilman Riemenschneider, uh, uh, look at the, some pictures of Grillen Gibbons. Uh, especially like documentary, They're, they've got like a BBC, I believe, documentary. And you can see on the back side of uh, Grillen Gibbons carving, it's rough, okay? So he never carved on the back side. So he just, uh, you know, chopped it, you know, and uh, left it rough. The idea behind uh, Grillen Gibbons carving was if uh, it's not going to be visible to human eye, why bother even to carve it, okay? On another hand, Silman Riemenschneider, he always, always developed the details on the back side of his carving, always, okay? And some people asked him, why did you do that? I mean, it's not going to be visible to any human being. So nobody's going to, especially if it's just uh, put together and, uh, and uh, he's got some complicated work. If you go to Germany, uh, to the old uh, churches, you can still find some of his work, which is not destroyed. A lot of work was destroyed by uh, uh, Reformation and so on movement, but some of it still remains right there. And you can see how complicated carvings and the construction, you know, how he put together, he's done. Tillman Riemenschneider, okay? Uh, he always carved, even if it's not going to be visible to the human eye. And people ask him, why would you do that? Okay, it's not going to be visible. And uh, he would answer, hey, yes, absolutely. People not gonna see it, but God will. So he actually developed the idea of uh, perfection, even on the back side. Okay, so he would just uh, spend time. And the way he carved is just awesome. And he also actually used the same wood what I'm using, okay? Uh, exactly the same wood, uh, lime wood. Uh, there's actually a book uh, German carvers, German lime wood uh, sculptors, okay? Um, and uh, by the way, I had a chance uh, to meet uh, one of the uh, people uh, who is actually related to Tillman Riemann Schneider. And he is the only one actually alive. And he lives in the United States uh, in North Carolina. Uh, close to Charlotte, North Carolina, but he has a woodworking shop in South Carolina, right on the border, okay? Uh, right on the border, north and south. So pretty much customers uh, he gets from North Carolina, from Charlotte, North Carolina, but he does all the business in South Carolina because of, you know, the land is a little cheaper and the shop is a little cheaper and so on. But he is the only one left from the Til uh, Tillman Riemann Schneider family tree alive okay so he right you know his descendant uh, pure blooded but the sad thing is he doesn't have any children okay and uh, he said he can't have any children so he would be just the last person uh, uh, you know who actually inherited some of the skills by the, by blood and he's not carver. He is a really great woodworker, by the way. He is a great woodworker. Uh, he does awesome custom uh, stuff. But, you know, so those two, okay, those two. Grillen Gibbons and Tillman Riemann Schneider. And of course, there's a lot more actually, you know, uh, uh, carvers. Uh, how, how is my sound? Okay, let me know, please. Let me check. I'm gonna check uh, Facebook also. Hopefully people on the Facebook you can see. 
Oh, by the way, uh, before I start uh, developing, I really would like uh, to ask you if it's okay. Uh, you can uh, just uh, go, it depends on the platform, on any of the platform. Like I said, there's a multiple platforms. Uh, there's a, a option. You can, uh, you know, like it. And please don't forget if there's an option, subscribe and also hit the notification bell. I would really appreciate it. Okay, and let me introduce myself. All right, so probably uh, most of it, I mean, most of you who's watching me already know uh, who am I, but my name is uh, Alexander Grabovetsky, and uh, I was born in the USSR. So, modern days part of it, it's just the biggest part is uh, Russia. I was born in the Russian part of uh, USSR, and uh, uh, escaped pretty much uh, or you know moved to United States long time ago okay so let's scarf and uh, again if you do have a questions you can ask me all right let me check uh, also Instagram if uh, people connected yep and I do have a lot of people from Instagram connected Thank you very much, people. Okay, and also I can see there's uh, people on uh, Twitter also connected. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to show all the, uh, you know, posts and uh, uh, all the comments, but I do appreciate uh, all the comments you're placing. Okay, uh, wonderful. Okay, let's, let me do that, okay? Let me develop. So see, I do have a chunk of wood I have to develop. All right, and it uh, doesn't make any sense as of now, uh, the movement. But what I want to do, uh, if you look at this part, this part, it goes on the ceiling pretty much. So that part continues and I have to extend actually even higher, uh, you know, glue above just another board and it's going to be much higher. So it's going to go all the way to the ceiling, but this part, is gonna be a head of a canthus, okay? That's gonna be a head of a canthus. Uh, and that, that's gonna move like that. And uh, how I envision one part of it, which is gonna be maybe invisible, most of it, gonna go like this. So this part is gonna become part of this movement right here, okay? And yes, I do have a preliminary, uh, you know, idea right there. But uh, on another hand, I do have a really good chunk on this side, which I can develop also. I can develop also and go all the way on the back of this movement. Okay, so it's gonna grow from this side and this is gonna grow also all the way that way. And that little thing, it's gonna be growing from underneath of this movement. I know it doesn't make sense as of now, but it will, it will, okay? It will, but I need to make sure it's uh, really authentic, authentic to the original, okay? Maybe I have to just go, this little thing going all the way inside. Okay, uh, people on the Facebook, do you see me? Do you see me? Just let me know if you see me or not. Okay, looks like they do. Okay, let me do that. Okay, let me work on it. So let me work on it. So the step number one would be, I probably have to uh, create the uh, excavation on the side so just to outline it first in the future there's going to be a corbel connected huge corbel actually like going all the way and i'm going to connect that uh, with the dominoes uh, fast tool dominoes the big one large ones so i need to keep some of the thickness which you don't see but i have to keep it great so the first cut i'm going to create uh, it's going to be as always number 11 in this case uh, 
I think it is uh, absolutely the best uh, tool to use. Okay, that's going to be number 11. Number 11. And I'm going to use uh, 12 millimeters, about uh, half an inch. All right. So let me do that. And yes, I am uh, using mullet. I am using mullet. Maybe it's a good idea for me on YouTube explain why you should use mullet, why carvers uh, use mullet. Uh, I, I had uh, one of the comments uh, on one of the live streams when uh, one of the carvers, I think, he said, you're not supposed to use mullet, you're supposed to just uh, push like this, okay? Uh, and uh, create your cut, then you're carving. If you're just uh, banging with the mullet, so it's not the real carving and of course it's not true of course uh, it is uh, uh, carving uh, with the mullet you do have a lot more control okay a lot more control so that's uh, why you're using it but uh, the way you use your mullet uh, you, when you um, are using the mullet let me show it to you uh, uh, a lot of people they bang like this okay and they get the uh, pain in the shoulder also so really, the mullet is supposed to be used only like a free hanging just inside of your palm. That's the right way to uh, use it. That way, your hand is not becoming really uh, tired, okay? So that's the way I'm using, even if you don't see that. But uh, like I said, if I'm going to use the whole body to bang on a mullet, I would get tired really quickly. And I can go all the way pretty much. Now I need to change the direction and outline my head of a canvas. And it's going to be this direction now. So this cut, what I just did, called uh, the name of it, uh, outlining cut or setting in if you are in England. Okay, setting in. Okay, so uh, really important for me to establish uh, some shapes. Right now, it just doesn't look too appealing to me. So I need to raise uh, this part. Let me see if there's any more questions I have. I apologize that I missed uh, some of the questions. Okay, hold on just a second. Uh, I see Sergio asking. Uh, Sergio, uh, let me uh, read it. What do you think about the two different approaches to the traditional carving? 2D, parting from a, a drawing, and 3D, parting from a, the form, craft against art. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that is a tricky question, Sergio. Okay, I, uh, I've done both, to be honest. Uh, as I understand uh, what you mean, and uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Uh, so we would say like uh, Michelangelo, okay? A uh, sculptor which uh, probably known uh, to all, all over the world, okay? So Michelangelo, he would say, uh, you know, he would take a piece of marble, a big chunk of stone, and he already see the form in the marble and he would create, uh, you know, the piece of art, okay? Uh, again, uh, Sergio, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and there, there's another approach. Uh, you draw uh, on a piece of paper, if it used to be like in a, in a history, uh, and then you carve, okay? Whatever, you just design that on a piece of paper and you place it uh, uh, on a piece of uh, media, wood or stone, and you carve it, okay? 
uh, um, you know, uh, I, I, I don't see uh, uh, anything wrong with both of those approaches. In reality, uh, when we're looking uh, at the Michelangelo work, when we're looking at the Michelangelo work, uh, it's what we think what he did all the time. He would just take a stone of marble, I mean, a piece of marble, huge piece of marble, and he would just stop, you know, just to start, just, you know, just creating uh, whatever the statue of David, okay? Uh, but uh, if you study a little deeper, uh, you know, that period, okay, what he did with the marble, uh, with the stone, with the lime of, uh, stone also, uh, it's not, it, it wasn't always that way, okay? So what they did actually, uh, and what the sculptors, and what I do sometimes also, uh, I mean, you saw I started online uh, one of the courses, uh, Lion Heads, Okay, huge, like uh, 40, you know, big, like a 48 inches uh, lion heads onlay. Uh, I do have all the filming done, uh, all the footage. It's like miles and miles and miles of footage. I just uh, have to find the time to edit uh, all of it. And uh, you saw that I started uh, from a uh, clay modeling. Okay, so I got actually clay. Uh, in this case, it was just a plastilina. It wasn't uh, hardening. Uh, clay it was just plastilina and I you know modeled everything with that line and uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show that to you let me let me try okay I'm gonna switch to my different camera and I'm gonna try to find it okay and maybe I'll be able to show to you what I'm talking about uh, but anyway let me while I'm uh, searching for it line while well, I'm searching for it okay I found one I think I can show that to you okay see uh, those um, uh, you know line heads which is applied uh, you know on the doors oh by the way uh, look at that picture look at that picture it's actually interesting i took that picture uh in a house it's a residence uh, uh you know i installed those lion heads in residence and uh, see uh, those two statues right on the sides uh, of uh, those double doors okay uh, if you know a little bit about uh, wood carvers and i just mentioned about tilman riemenschneider uh, tilman riemenschneider those two statues actually done by the tilman riemenschneider 15th century okay but uh, I'm talking about uh, lines. You can see that uh, I carved. But the thing is, uh, what I'm trying to explain, uh, exactly the same way, exactly the same way, what I've done, even Michelangelo, who would see inside of the stone certain piece of art, certain movements and so on. But he also did clay modeling and uh, invention of a pointing machine the sculptures using and i'm also uh, showing that online and you probably saw already because you're not missing any of my videos i really do appreciate that uh, sergio uh, they would just uh, create a, a clay model use a pointing machine and uh, then they would just uh, put that on a piece of uh, marble okay so they just uh, actually copy it it's pretty much the ancient for, uh, form of a, a copy machine, if you would say, or dupli carver, if you wish, okay? So that, uh, you know, one of the approaches. But another approach, again, uh, Sergio, if I'm wrong, if I did not understand correctly the question, let me know. But uh, another approach would be just like mine, okay? Right here, that's what I did. I did over all main movements you know all you know for the all the design but i did not develop uh, the movements details inside until i carve it okay i did not draw on a piece of paper uh, all the details all the separations and so on i actually carving and designing on the go so i pretty much placed the main uh, uh, main 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 movements uh, already uh, in this case i used uh, you know uh, computer 
and I just did uh, 3D development, uh, you know, in a computer, but I did only main movements without uh, details. And I'm following those uh, main movements. And then I create uh, pretty much uh, all the final details right there. Okay. Now, uh, so about the uh, art and craft, who is more artistic as, uh, and who is just a craftsman? It's a tricky question, really tricky. It applies to wood carving and the stone carving. Are stone carvers and wood carvers uh, uh, artists? Are they craftsmen? Okay. And there's a third option, tradesmen. Okay, it's just a trade. And wood carvers, let's say in a 17th, 18th, and even 19th century, if you would be uh, in uh, Great Britain, in England, uh, they would be divided in uh, different levels. Okay, in a different levels. The lowest one uh, would be a boat carvers. They would call them boat carvers. They would just carve for the big boats, uh, like uh, the boats which is in the ocean and the seas, okay? And uh, the carving is really huge, you know, and the chunky. They use a lot of, uh, you know, axes and uh, adzes. So it's like uh, in Russia, we would call it the taporna robota, which means just the bite, you know, the main tool was, so let me show that to you. All right, the main tool was uh, right there. Okay, so that that's what they would use, just the axe. Okay, uh, those are like uh, rough carvers. Okay, uh, then uh, there would be a different level of uh, wood carvers. Uh, they would call them uh, coach carvers. Okay, uh, so they would just uh, carve. Uh, uh, road, uh, I mean, the, I mean those coaches which is uh, rising on the roads of, uh, you know, England in that case, all right? But we're talking about like a buggy carvers. Uh, so that is uh, the second level. So they've got little more detail because people would come closer to those uh, vehicles and they would just uh, look at the details. But it's still on the road. It would be just uh, be banked and just uh, destroyed and so on. It's still big. It's still like they would, the main tool would be the same tool, maybe big gouges. Uh, then a third higher level of wood carvers, they would call them home carvers. Uh, it would be equal to architectural carving. Uh, and they would do a lot of egg and darts, they would do a lot of moldings uh, with the somacanthus movements, uh, they would do uh, frames for the pictures, for the art and so on. Architectural stuff like a corbels, uh, you know, they would do create beautiful arches with some carved uh, details and so on. And there is a fourth level of uh, wood carvers, uh, it's artistic, okay, it's like a Glen Gibbons. So they would develop beautiful designs uh, over mantles, uh, you know, over those uh, picture frames. Uh, uh, you know, let's say someone would carve a, a picture frame, not a picture, art frame, I should say, because they did not have a picture, of course. They had a fine art. Uh, and someone would carve, uh, you know, that uh, frame for the art. And uh, people like uh, Glenn Gibbons, the higher level, artistic level of uh, wood carvers, they would just uh, create something surrounding existing frame. Okay, so uh, the question was art versus craft. But I would, like I said, uh, I would add the third one. It's a trade. Okay, uh, uh, people who carved for boats and carved for. Um, you know, on the road, those coaches and uh, buggies and vehicles, uh, those are just the tradesmen, okay? Different level, it's a craftsman, would be architectural wood carvers. Uh, why I'm saying that, there's uh, not much artistic going on in architectural wood carving, because there's not too many details, in, uh, honestly, okay? Uh, when you go to the ancient uh, palaces, uh, old palaces, I should say, and see all the moldings applied, the crown moldings and uh, all the uh, like base moldings, all the chair rails and uh, all other uh, moldings, they about the same. They all would just use about the same details. Yeah, there's a lot, 
maybe hundreds of different uh, designs, but they would carve one detail day after day after day after day, like uh, egg and dart, egg and dart, egg and dart, egg and dart, all the time. Those people craftsmen, and they develop really good skills, okay? So they can carve with uh, closed eyes, with no problem. They would not miss, you know, even one millimeter. It's perfection. But they were not able to create. They would not be able to design. And that would be another level, like a Glenn Gibbons ability to design, think in three-dimensional world. Those people, artists, okay? And it's not just the artists. It's not just the artists. Uh, let me tell you uh, why a wood carvers and the sculptors is actually, it's a different, uh, not the level, but the different type of artistic people, different type of artistic people. Uh, there's a lot of uh, artists who can draw in two dimensional world. There's a lot of artists who can uh, paint, create a fine art. It's an artist, they all are artistic. And we're talking about millions, millions of people all over the world. You go in almost any village, in any of the countries, in any of the countries, at least someone, someone is artistic uh, and he can draw, he can paint. Even in a small classroom, uh, uh, you know, with the children of uh, 10 to 30 people, almost in every classroom, one of the child would be artistic and he is able uh, uh, to draw something and uh, create something nice. I was one of those children actually at school. Uh, I had, uh, you know, always to do something uh, for the class, okay, draw some big, 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 uh, uh, you know, informational posts, draw and paint informational posts, you know, just information. Uh, but let me repeat myself, a lots of artists, millions, but not too many sculptors, okay? Sculptors working in three-dimensional world, artists working in two-dimensional world. Millions of artists and only maybe thousands of sculptors, thousands versus millions. They also artistic, they also have that same ability to develop a beautiful, beautiful design, okay? But versus two-dimensional, they're working in three-dimensional world, 3D, okay? So, sculptors. And uh, even other level of sculptors, it's carvers. they also sculptors. I should say they also work with the sculpture, okay? They still work in three-dimensional world, but the difference between... Uh, just a normal people who's uh, doing a sculpture. They usually add on, okay? They add clay or other media, and they actually, you know, just to create by adding, 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 chopping out, adding, 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 chopping out, and create the form. That's the modern day uh, sculptors. They're using uh, lots of clay and uh, uh, concrete and so on, which is uh, also requires uh, specific skills. If you would compare to wood carvers who is working in three-dimensional world and stone carvers, you're not adding stuff on, you're chopping out, okay? You chop, 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 you actually in the art of deduction, you minusing, okay? So you actually taking away, you know, what not supposed to be in a, that particular piece. Okay, so that is actually a Michelangelo example I told before. So he would just take a big stone, a marble stone, and he would just chop, you know, and just to create the form, reveal what is inside. But are those people I mentioned artistic? I mean, the people who's carving wood, people who's uh, carving stone, are working with the clay, or just the drawing, or just uh, paint, they all artistic, okay? They all artistic, okay? But how do you apply that to the wood carvers uh, who's uh, like uh, carving from a pattern they design versus uh, they take a chunk of wood and just to develop that on the wood? Um, 
I don't know. I mean, uh, you still have to be artistic. You still have to be an artist. You still have to know how to do that, which is not that hard, by the way. Uh, uh, you watched, uh, especially you, Sergey, you watched my course on a furniture panel development, uh, and I spent a long time developing the idea of what it's going to be because it's going to be authentic to 18th century uh, design. And uh, I hope. Uh, you understand but anyway any artist any artist who is carving wood who's carving wood he has to develop skills or craft i would say skill of the craft of wood carving all right so let me read the some of the chat okay, and i can see Uh, Jose is saying, I always wondered if uh, Joseph and Jesus had inherited any of uh, North, uh, North tools. Huh. Well, <laughs> Jose, that is actually a really excellent uh, question. Okay, It's not actually the question, it's what you're saying. First of all, uh, yes, uh, in English translation, uh, it says uh, Jesus' father was a carpenter. Okay. Yeshua's father. So his uh, real name, the Jesus' name is Yeshua. Uh, he was a carpenter. But the carpenter in uh, 2000 years ago, living in uh, Judea, modern day Israel, it's not necessarily woodworker. It's not necessarily framer who would take a two by four or two by six or two by eight and frame a house, okay? Or build a bench. Uh, or do uh, you know some kind of cabinet uh, cabinetry work it's not true if you know a little bit about the history a carpenter in a judea and also in all roman empire most of the people who called carpenters they were stone workers they worked with the stone okay and uh, as you know the time uh, in Judea, you know, 2,000 years ago, when the father of uh, Yeshua, father of uh, Jesus, uh, uh, it was a time when uh, the, uh, the temple was uh, actually renovated, rebuilt one more time, okay? So, and there's a lot of craftsmen, a lot of stone workers of worked inside of that temple. Not only temple, there's uh, actually, you know, uh, other buildings and houses uh, they worked on. But uh, as you know, it's not too many uh, wooden structures in Israel, even uh, if you know a little bit the history, especially in Judea. Yes, I mean, yes, I mean, I shouldn't say not too many. I mean, it used to be a time, it used to be a time, and a Solomon's time, or when uh, his house was built from uh, cedar and then it was just gold leafed and so on. Uh, they used a lot of cedar and uh, Solomon used actually redwood, really expensive redwood uh, inside of, uh, you know, his uh, palace and also, uh, you know, some uh, other materials. So, but to say he inherited no uh, tools, absolutely not, of course. I mean, first of all, we even don't know what kind of tools he had, all right? But that could be complicated tools. All right. Uh, the carving of the temple is what uh, inspired me, Jose is saying. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, not only temple, I guess. Uh, for me, there was a guy actually before the temple building, uh, Ark of a Covenant. Uh, uh, when the Moses built his temple, there was a, uh, we call him a Bezaliel. And uh, it says in uh, Exodus 35, I believe Exodus 35, uh, 31 and 35, it says, uh, uh, you know, God filled him with the spirit of knowledge, wisdom and understanding and ability to work with different materials uh, and carve wood. So he's uh, one of the guys I really appreciate. Okay. Okay. Let me. Igor Shumar. Спасибо большое. Очень приятно, что вы меня мастером называете. Okay. Let me check uh, Facebook. For some reason, I do have some glitches today um, on the different platforms. Oh, don't forget to share it, okay? Don't forget to share it. It's uh, also important. Let me check uh, Instagram. Instagram is still alive and other platforms still alive, okay? Okay, let me carve. 
let me carve. I'm pretty much uh, during this live stream, what I'm doing, uh, you know, just uh, <laughs> talking. But it's okay. I mean, I guess it's all right. So I have no problem with that. I have absolutely no problem with that. But uh, at least if you can take one thing uh, from this live stream, it already makes me happy. It already makes me happy. Okay. So, and one thing is that outlining. That is the outlining. All right, so, and I don't think I'm gonna have uh, a lot of time today on the live stream. If you wanna see uh, more development, if you wanna see more development, so just uh, please go on my school site, schoolofwoodcarving.com and uh, check it out. And I'm gonna continue to carve, uh, uh, for example, you saw some partial development of this yesterday but I've done a lot more actually today so if you want to see the whole process you really have to be a, a part of my school like Sergio are okay so he is a, a part of my school okay so let me get a little deeper in this area because I really want to uh, create a three-dimensional excavation there three-dimensional look I'm gonna take 30 millimeters. 30 millimeters. Number 11. And I'll go all the way. And uh, maybe this way, a little more. And I'm gonna probably right away uh, lower this side also. I know it looks scary, but it's not. I know what I'm doing. Okay, so just like that. Just like that. And uh, maybe even lower this part. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get uh, a deep cut, you know, just to try to get uh, as low as possible, but still leave some of the chunk for the connection point. And uh, still, I don't want to lose the overall feel, but I really, really need uh, uh, to create the movement, which in this case, I probably now have to switch to one of my favorite tools and product, and that would be just a skew chisel and if it's in England that would be just number two and if it's uh, in Germany or other European uh, countries it would be still number one because in Germany uh, number two would be already a gouge it's a different tool Okay. But I need to 
give us some roundness to this area. Paul, thank you very much for the thumbs up. And today, for some reason, for some reason, I'm just checking a Facebook, and a Facebook decided not to notify, uh, you know, those people who's usually watching. You know, it happened yesterday also. I don't know why. I looks like, you know, I did something, and they lowered my quality of uh, stream itself. Uh, I did uh, when I did the first time like all of my people got notification that they didn't think it's a good idea and I also gonna do a little bit of roundness of this side And I need to reveal uh, this uh, part because it's going to be visible from the bottom. So I really want to make sure it's going to be visible on the higher. Okay. Okay. That is great. And let me check one more time and I'm gonna probably end up, you know, just to end my stream. And like I said, you know, for some reason, uh, Facebook did not notify me. I mean, my people and all. Okay, uh, so wonderful people. I'm really uh, do appreciate that you are watching. Uh, thank you very much. Now I'm gonna end my stream. Uh, so if you really wanna see my stream, please uh, let me know because I'm still kind of testing if I really should spend time on it or not, okay? Otherwise, uh, you're always welcome to go to my school site, schoolofwoodcarving.com. And uh, right there is uh, a lot of different videos on the different uh, uh, subjects different projects small ones I have like small rosette project if you never carved or big ones and uh, yes uh, those um, uh, lion hats I showed to you let me show that one more time uh, those uh, uh, lion hats are also going to be part of uh, my school okay so if you really like it but I still have to find the time to edit my video Okay, because I'm carving all day long, pretty much from the morning all the way to the evening. And uh, for every half an hour, maybe of live stream, I have uh, a lot of hours of, uh, you know, just for my school videos. All right. Have a wonderful day. Blessings to you. Stay safe. All right.